Hi, my name's Larry Moore, and I'm the director of baseball in the Berkshires. We're a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to tell the story of the fascinating history of baseball in the Berkshires through exhibits and educational programming. Today, we are here in the Lee Outlets, and we talk about our earliest mention of baseball in a government document, the 1791 Broken Window Bylaw. It's a simple bylaw that states that no game of ball, one of which is baseball, could be played within 80 yards of the new meeting house. It's really a great mention of baseball, but it doesn't mean by any means that baseball started here in Pittsfield. Our next exhibit, uh, display is on the first college game. And the first college game in the United States was played in Pittsfield in 1859 between Amherst and Williams. It was a game of brawn and brains. Brawn being, of course, baseball, but brains, they also brought their chess teams as well. As we move on, we have a gentleman by the name of Bob Pettit, who was playing at the time for the Chicago White Stockings of the National League. The White Stockings later became what we know today as the Chicago Cubs. He was invited in 1888 by Albert Spaulding, along with an all-star group of two teams to go on a goodwill trip around the world. You can see here at the top of the display the teams in Egypt. Here we have a list of all the baseball town and club teams that were in the Berkshires between 1858 and 1880. We had gotten a call from Sabre, which is the Research Society of Baseball, and they asked to, for us to research the teams that we may have had during those years. As you can see, we found quite a few. There are over 275 teams on that list. The first professional baseball team in the Berkshires was in 1877. They also played in 1878. The name of the team was the Pittsfields. Yes, not quite very inventive with the name, but as you can scan, as you see down, they also played the Troy team, which was called the Haymakers. Otherwise, the teams had quite simple names like the Man Manchesters and the Springfields. So here we have a listing of all the professional baseball teams that called Berkshire County their home. You can see there are 60 years of professional teams here in Berkshire County. And it's interesting to see that, yes, we started 1877 and 1878, but if we look, we also have in 1898, the Cuban ex-giants calling North Adams their home. So here is the historic park in Pittsfield, Wakona Park. It was built in 1892 by the Burbank family and turned over to the city of Pittsfield in 1919. It has one of the oldest wooden grandstands, but 
the only problem is they built this field facing the wrong direction. It faces west, which wasn't a problem in the 1800s because no games were played under the lights, but were played in the afternoon. Once the game is played at night, the sun faces directly into the batter's eyes and a sudden delay has to be called for 20 minutes before the game can continue. So this list is a list of all the players that played for a minor league team based in Pittsfield that later went on to play in the major leagues. So you will find such players here as Greg Maddox, Carlton Fisk, George Scott, Reggie Smith, and on and on. Okay, if you remember, we talked about the Cuban ex-giants calling North Adams their home in 1898. And you ask why, and it was because of this gentleman, Ulysses Frank Grant. Born in Pittsfield, raised in Williamstown. Frank Grant was an outstanding baseball player of the 19th century. Remember, this is pre-Negro Leagues. Mr. Grant played for the Cuban Giants and Cuban ex-Giants. So we surmise that's how we can make that connection. Mr. Grant also played for the Buffalo Bisons. Buffalo was sort of like a triple-A team at that time. Baseball was integrated. The last year he played for Buffalo, the owners got together and decided that baseball would no longer be integrated, but segregated. So here we have Satchel Paige. Another Hall of Famer, Didn't, wasn't born here in Berkshire County, but played at Wakona Park. He played at one time for the Monarchs, and here we also have a throwback uniform of the Monarchs that was donated to our exhibit. So here we have a list of the Berkshire County's minor leaguers. There's over 210 minor leaguers that were born, settled, or raised here. On the left, you can see Billy Hart, a very famous athlete from Berkshire County, Williamstown to be specific. He was an outstanding, not only an outstanding baseball player, but basketball player, golfer, track star, and tennis player. To the right, we have Brian House. Brian House played for the Pittsfield Cubs. He was not born here, but he settled here after marrying a local girl. The artifacts below are from all the minor league teams we have had here again 60 years of minor league teams that the 60 years of minor league teams is third in the Commonwealth with Boston being first, Springfield being second, and Pittsfield and the Berkshires being third. So here we have the non-players, professional baseball personnel. That includes the scouts, the umpires, GMs, and people that work maybe as commentators for Major League Baseball. On the left, we have Tom Mooney, who signed Ken Griffey Jr. back when he was 19. We have over 110 non-player personnel, and as I said, it goes anything from groundskeepers to concession people to ticket takers all the way up to people that were 
general managers for major league teams. Over here, we have Dan Duquette, who was the general manager for the Montreal Expos, the Boston Red Sox, and most recently, the Baltimore Orioles. And of course, Jim, I mean Dan's cousin, was Jim. And Jim worked for the uh, New York Mets, the Houston Astros, and later on the Baltimore Orioles. Most recently, he's a spokesperson on MLB radio. So here we have Dale Long. Dale graduated from Adams High School. And he's really played for the Yankees and the Pirates, but is well known for hitting home runs in eight consecutive games. That's a record that our friend over there, Ken Griffey Jr., tied. And of course, Don Mattingly did that also. So here we have another major leaguer from Berkshire County. This is Matt White. Matt White is from Windsor. He was a Rule 5 draft choice by the Boston Red Sox and spent a couple of years with them before moving on and finishing up his career with Los Angeles Dodgers minor league team. Here we have the major leaguers from Berkshire County. There's over 40 of them. Again, we have two Hall of Famers. Earlier you met Frank Grant. Below, we have Jack Chesbrough. Jack Chesbrough played for the New York Highlanders in 1904, started 51 games, finished 48 of them, and won 41 of them. Certainly a stellar record to put him in this, to the Hall of Fame. This is Jonah Bayless. Jonah Bayless was from Williamstown and he played for the Pirates and the Royals in the early 2000s. One of the highlights in this case is his first strikeout, which of, was of the Hall of Famer Frank Thomas. Here we have Jim Bouton of one of the teams he played for, of course, were the New York Yankees. Jim is not from this area, but he settled in, the, in Great Barrington later on in life and is well known for writing a book called Ball Four. Also, he wrote another book called Foul Ball, which was about the reclaiming of Wakona Park. Here we have Turk Wendell. Turk was a starting and relief pitcher for 11 years. He pitched for the Cubs and the Mets. And he was known for his quirks. Turk, among other things, never stepped on a foul line, always took a magnificent jump over the foul line wouldn't let the umpire throw the ball back to him. He would either let it hit his chest and then pick it up or step aside and pick it up. If the catcher stood up, Turk would squat down. If the catcher squatted down, of course, he stood up. But probably his most famous quirk was chewing black licorice instead of tobacco. And of course, because of the sugar content, he had to take care of those pearly whites, and he brushed his teeth in between innings. So next, we have Jeff Reardon, the outstanding relief pitcher. He spent 16 years in the major leagues, known as the Terminator. He had over 300 saves. When he retired, he was second on the all-time save list with Hall of Famer Lee Smith. 
played for, not only for the world champion Minnesota Twins, but the Red Sox, the Mets, and of course, the dreaded Yankees. Next, we have Mark Belanger. Mark was originally from Cheshire, later moved to Lanesboro, and attended Pittsfield High School. People say he was a better basketball player than a baseball player, but holy mackerel, he must have been a great basketball player because as a baseball player, he won eight gold gloves. Later went on to a very influential position with the Players Association. However, he died at a very young age of 55. Okay, this is Troy's garage. Uh, Garrett Troy was the owner of the local Ford garage and also the town sheriff. But lover of baseball, he wanted to have the best semi-pro baseball team in the area. It was formed at first in 1934, and they played probably 40 games and won more games than they lost. 1935, he wanted to get better. He expanded that circle of picking local players to a little bit further than Berkshire County. In 1935, he also invited Connie Max. Philadelphia A's to play against them in Kersey Field. He then not only played the A's, but played the Cincinnati Reds. In that year, 1935, he had 35 home games, with the total attendance being over 75 thousand people. That's going to a town that had a population of 1,000 people. That team continued through 1941, also playing the Boston Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies. So this is our women's history display. And when we were first working on our history of baseball in the Berkshires, we happened to come across a book on women in baseball. And we found a statement in that book that said in 1905, two women's baseball teams were formed at Miss Hall's Girls School in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. The girls played in long pleated skirts with blouses with high collars. No doubt the outfits restricted movement and were hot on warm summer days. So here we went to Miss Hall School and asked if they had any pictures. And here you can see a few of those pictures of Miss Hall's girls in action. So here we have our recreational section, and we start over here with Joe Garrity. Joe was a pitcher from right here in Lee, and he pitched in the third in the forties and fifties, and had a, a habit of signing the baseballs from the the games he pitched in. We then have some Lee history. Lennox with Duke Lahard. Duke Lahard played out of Lennox, but also was ball boy for Troy's Garage. But he became a minor league player also. We have teams from North Adams, from Lennox and Pittsfield, old town time teams. We have the Orient Express from Drury High School. 1978, they win the state championship. Their coach takes them on a goodwill trip to Taiwan. There, on the way to Taiwan, they stop in Disneyland, go and play in Taiwan. On the way back, they stop in Hawaii. Quite the trip. Lennox 
teams, the Lennox Brotherhood Club and just the Lennox Town teams. These uniforms are from the 20s and 30s. Then we get to the Adult Baseball League that just finished up recently. And we have the 2023 age 33 and above Thunder team that went undefeated all season. The other team was the Kraken from North County, and they were the 20-plus winners. The college teams we have here with the Suns out of Pittsfield and the Steeple Cats out of North Adams. And finally, our last case is the Brass Rail team from 1949 that went to the amateur championship and came back with a national championship. Well, I want to thank you for enjoying this trip with us today with the fascinating history of baseball in the Berkshires. Please make sure to visit us on Facebook, Baseball in the Berkshires, or online with baseballinberkshires.org. My name is Larry Moore. I'm the director of Baseball in the Berkshires, and thanks ever so much.